chapter 6, problem 35, and I'm actually going to give you guys a head start, so I want you to read the problem and get started on it. I will point out that there is some useful information that they don't really mention on page 423. So you're doing the problem, but there's a, a table on page 423 of information that you do need. All right, Cheryl. We have, I believe, a copper sphere that we're pulling upward. In, is it in air? Is it good? It's in a fluid. Awesome. Fluid. Uh, we know the radius of the object. We know the proportionality constant. We know the constant velocity we're pulling it upward with. Um, and we're looking for the force of block. Cheryl, how do you want to start? I actually don't suggest doing like finding the resistance force or things like that. That's kind of doing a piecemeal. Uh, you will eventually find the resistance force, but I prefer actually not to start there. It's kind of like pulling out little pieces. And I prefer to kind of do everything all together. What would you suggest, um, Carol? We're dealing with forces, so drawing a free body diagram is a good first step. Kevin, free body diagram. We have drawn our free body diagram. Can we'll run back up one now? Uh, we could sum the forces in the y direction. Summing the forces in the y direction. Force applied minus the resistance force minus the force of gravity equals mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Please start plugging in this stuff for me. That's it. Just that's right there. That's equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Thoughts? What should we do with what I've got on the board? Go. It does. It is moving at a constant velocity, so the acceleration in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. That's going to be helpful. I agree. We have one other issue we need to deal with on the board. It has to do with the fact that the equation for that we're using is for the resistance is equal to negative b times the velocity. It's a small thing, but an important one because it's wrong at the moment. Heather. Um, the negative signifies that it's in the opposite direction of the velocity. Therefore, in the equation that we have there, they should be positive. We have already identified, by drawing the free body diagram, the direction of the resistance force. We already identified that it's opposite the direction of the velocity. Therefore, this negative is not going to, we're not going to put it in there. It would actually be redundant, and we would actually have the resistance force in the same direction as the velocity. So if you recall, uh, the force of a spring from last year was equal to negative kx, where this negative had to do with the direction. And once you've drawn the free body diagram, you've determined the direction. The same thing is true here. The resistance force is negative is equal to negative b times the velocity. That's just the direction. So we don't put that uh, negative in twice. So the force applied then is equal to mass times the acceleration of gravity plus the proportionality constant times the velocity. We have everything in here with the exception of the mass. How are we going to figure out the mass, Bob? Uh, density equals mass over volume. We have the density from 423. Mass per unit volume. Therefore, the mass is going to be equal to the density times the volume. The density of copper is? 8.92 times 10 to the 3. 892, so 8,920 kilograms per meter cubed. OK. Uh, we're close. 
I see the density. What about the volume? About the volume is four thirds time cube. Because it's a sphere. So in this particular case, it's the volume of a sphere. So the mass is going to be equal to the density, 8,920, multiplied by the volume of the sphere, four thirds pi r cubed. We have the radius, it is 0 0.02 that cubed. What then is the mass, please? Mm -hmm. Nine. Yes. Independent confirmation? Yeah. Okay. Great. That is our mass in kilograms. Therefore, we have 0 0.2989 multiplied by the acceleration of gravity, 9.8, plus the proportionality constant, which was 0 0.95, multiplied by the velocity, 0 0.09. The force applied in order to pull this through this fluid with this constant velocity is? 3.014 newtons with sig face. Um, were there three? I don't really know. Yes, three? Yes. Okay. So 3.01 newtons. Great. 